What is up, my little Danos? Vips, this is Yoko, of the House of Giardregas, and we are here for the PPL Season 3 Week 4 Battle when I go up against 1C Bennett, somebody that I don't remember if I got to play before, honestly. So, pretty cool uh, experience in that regard to get to play somebody new, and we are going to be trying to bounce back from last week, which, frankly, was one of my poorest performance to think of it in Generation 9 as a whole for myself, and I'm really disappointed in myself that it happened versus Joey, aka PokyMD, that I really looked uh, look forward to play against, and I really couldn't really show what I'm capable of, but this week I'm hoping to bounce back versus somebody that has a very threatening roster. He has a rain aspect to his team, but he also has mons that can function outside of the rain, like as you can see right about now. Uh, on the screen in itself. He has Terra Captains of Terra Kindra with Terra Water and Steel, which is very frightening, but so is Bishop with Dark, Steel and Flying in itself. Then he has things like Heatran, Gods of and Iron Hands that can easily function outside of the rain or support the rain in a different ways. And um, then even something like a Raichu, even without being a Terra Captain anymore, can be pretty decent versus me too. And obviously the rain abusers with the Pascal, Litsun, Kindra, and the Pelipper being the rain setter. All of those things can be very threatening to me. And the only Pokemon that I'm kind of discrediting versus me would be the Lurandis, and hopefully I don't end up regretting it. But outside of that, he does have a pretty solid chance to bring all of his nine Pokemon into this matchup. So, and can be scary because of that for me to really know for certain what he can bring. But I'm bringing a team that should work relatively well versus the rain team, because I do have Okerbon, Wellspring, and Tornadus. Uh, there as well, but there's gonna be some cool aspects that I'm gonna be trying to utilize this week as a form of speed control if it comes down to it, including double cast up berries uh, on my team. So until we are connected with my opponent, I'll be coming back with the battle. Alright, we are back here with the battle on itself and we are good to go to search and hopefully things go better than last week. Again, like I mentioned on the uh, beginning of the portion of the video, um, I'm gonna be Planning to lead either with my Choice Specs Tornado Sterian or this one, but depending on what I see. And uh, we don't see a rain aspect on the team. Alright, so we see the Iron Hands. We see the Galar Weezing. We see the Garchomp. We see the Bishop, which is the Terra Captain. So now I know I need to preserve my wellspring for that thing because it can be scary with the terra plus um sword dance set i have encore for it and then we see the basculation and the heatran as well okay in a matchup like this i think i'm better off leading with my swampert because it allows me to deal with potential iron hands lead or if it's a heatran i have to scout for a power up solo beam uh scenario Uh, yeah, I should have all all them locked in. So I think in a scenario like this, I'm gonna leave with my Swampert. Because it should be able to handle most of the leads just fine. And it gives me potential to go for Stealth Rocks. Or I have to scout potential Power Solo Beam coming into my way. But uh, I'll, I'll be locking with that and we'll see how this goes. Good luck and have fun to 1C and hopefully it's gonna be a good game. But <laughs> selflessly, I'm hoping to bounce back and go... F 2-2 two to two and start putting myself in a better position for the playoff race. But this will be a, obviously a very difficult match. So he does lead with the gallery and wheezing, which may intel that this could be toxic spikes. Which can be annoying to some of my Pokemon, but um, some of the ones that I will require the most, um, like Tornado Stegen and High Dragon, should be handling that aspect just fine. But I'll go for the Stealth Rocks here. As he does have taunt on it, okay. So he was a taunt lead, uh, preventing stealth rocks, which is a fair play from his side. Now I think I'll go for the flip turn, because then I'll get a slow initiative in slow initiative into my tornado stereon and allows me to go for a psychic. As he does have will always, so it's taunt will always set instead. So my um, attacks will be not doing a lot here most of the things but the Swampert is here just to pivot and I have to find a different opportunity to go for the Stealth Rocks which should be happening versus some of the other guys for me but for now I wanna say I'll go into my 
choice packs tornadoes. And uh, prior times I've revealed myself to be a uh, wide lens focus blast in a matchup versus a Heatran, which I'm sure he has seen. So part of me wants to think that this is a scenario that he goes into Iron Hands, which means I want to get a fat Psychic off here. And it happens to hit what is in front of me as well, so I'll go for that. See what is going to be the swap in here. Unfortunately, it's going to be the Heatran. So he's getting off the first few turns quite fine, but now I can see that are you leftovers or not? Oh, what do we see here? We see leftovers, okay. So unless this is also taunt, this is something I can utilize as an opportunity to get up my stealth rocks. Otherwise it would be a scenario that I go for a slow flip turn and get my uh, Ogre Bond Wellspring in here. But um... Interesting that he didn't bring the rain aspect, but I guess I do have a couple of things to abuse it with Ogrebon Wellspring um, as well as the Taunting in itself, so in that regard it's kind of fair. The Heatran has revealed to have leftovers on it. So only thing that I'm kind of worried about it is potentially having the Taunt. We'll see what he uh, what he does here. This should be relatively free. Like stealth rocks from his side if he does pack them on this. Which I would imagine a Heatran would carry. As I will withdraw. He may have taken that turn to calculate the damage cause. Um, now I revealed myself to be choice packs to him. But he does go for the Mag Magnestorm and does manage to land it. Which does start whittling me down a little bit, but I do have Citrus Berry on this. Um... <laughs> do I... Scout for like a taunt scenario and go for like, um... Earthquake here? Or do I go for like a flip turn here? I think I wanna go for the Stealth Rocks. Because we'll, I haven't seen the taunt yet, okay. I'm glad I didn't like overthink about that and start thinking like everything that could learn taunt has the taunt. So this does give me the chance to go for the stealth rocks, as the iron has does come in hard on this. Okay. That doesn't quite put me in a citrus berry range, which is unfortunate. Now, if this is a setup set, I do have Encore on my other guys, so I think I'll go for a slow flip turn, and if he tries to set up, I have the Encore with my Ogre Bone Wellspring, so I'll go for the flip turn. He does have Sword Dance, so this means I will go into my... Uh, into my Ogre Bone Wellspring, and I don't think he will expect it to see coming. So for now, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time, you will not notice this on the recording itself, because I did it out, but I'll, I'm gonna make him think a bit further than start like hot swapping on an Encore, and make him think that he's in a really good position with this. But it's good to know this is not a Salt Fest anymore, by the fact that he was able to go for the Sword Dance. Okay, we're gonna go into our Wellspring, and I do have Encore in a case of scenarios like this, that the Bishop or Iron Hands, if it's not a Salt Fest, uh, I have the Encore to go for, so I'll go for the Encore here. Which is really good in this scenario. And then I can make a choice that do I go for the Spikes? Or uh, do I go for... Uh, the Ivy Cutshaw. Those are basically my choices here. Now, versus the Weezing... Uh, I could go for Ivy Cutshaw coming in, because I would expect that to be his swapping. Uh, but getting up spikes can be really nice for late game, because I'm looking at Diancy to be my winning condition. So I think right now, I would say spikes are not, uh, more important. So I'll go for the spikes, as he does have to withdraw. As we see Heatran coming in. Oh wow. But I'll go for my spikes here. I know if he was expect expecting like a U-turn and that's why he made this play, but I think... I am okay staying in here and try to hit this as hard as I can, because I want to say I can kill this. I'm not max attack on this, so we'll see if that's gonna be something I have to regret. 
but my torn tornado stereo looks really good here and I don't know if he can realistically stay in here he may have honestly tried to fish for a burn but I'll go for the ivy cut show here Because damaging this Heatran means that he loses one of his main flying resist. The only other one that he has left then would be the Bishop. Which is his, his Terra Captain as well. But I do think uh, like based on the guy, like, he doesn't know how much attack gun I have on this. So I feel like unless he's max visually defensive, he has to withdraw here as he does uh, do that. As he goes into Clara. Which is the wheezing, so it's gonna be taking stealth rocks and it's levitated. And I can go for the Ivy Cut, so which does a decent amount of damage. And we don't see item proking off, so this could be a Custa Berry, this could be a, a Rocky Helmet in a case I'm going for a different move. But let's see how much. Um, how much was I supposed to be doing to this? 32 to 38. That is still outside of range of that. In a case that he goes for a uh, pain split, I wanna say I'm gonna go into my swamp bird. I get a slow initiative from there. I think that's how I'm gonna go about this. I'm not gonna let this thing get burned because this thing is very good versus the iron hands. Again, it, trying to set up, it's very good for the bishop. As he does go for the pain split, which does allow him to gain a little bit of HP, but it also means that I'll gain my Citrus Berry. And I get a slow initiative on this guy. Which I really want to see. The winning condition is still looking to be my Diane C with the uh, Howl of Meteor Beam set. But based on the fact that it's not a rain team, I have the option to utilize also my High Trapple as a Terra Captain here. Which is Terra Fairy this week. For now, I think I'll go for a flip turn. Gain a little bit of chip on this thing still. And I can proceed from there. And then, honestly, I could go for a fat hurricane. Because with all these hazards being up, he doesn't want to deal with that. He does go for the sludge bomb. As I get a little bit of chipping on this. Right, it cannot be Rocky Helmet. So it's... Right. We saw already before. I mentioned Rocky Helmet, but we already have flipped on this couple of times. So it's not Rocky Helmet. One of the opportunities that I could do is that I go into my high tray gun and go for a flash cannon because it should kill it from here. That is the alternative option. I could go into tornado stereo and go for a hurricane. But um... Hmm. I think high tray gun might put a little bit more pressure on him. So I'm gonna use high tray gun instead because... I have the option to go for a flash cannon here. There is the alternative universe that this could be a reducing berry for me. Now looking at it, but I think I still wanna go for flash cannon here. I'll go for the flash cannon here. Oh, he does have the reducing berry, and I thought about this too. Oh, and it lives! That's unfortunate. Oh, he does go for pain split though. Okay, he does go for pain split. Does that mean that I'll get to kill it? I wanna say I do. Okay, I'm glad that he didn't go for attack. Like, I thought about the reducing berry and then I'm like, no, surely it won't be that. So it was a Papiri berry. But Flash Cannon still, even if you were like max bedef somehow with that, this should still kill. So I'll go for Flash Cannon again. I can bluff to beat Choice Scar with this. He does swap into Heatran now. Which I'm fine with because I'm actually not Choice Scar with this. So I can go for our Earth Power here and we'll see if he even has the opportunity to scout this. As I get this bedef drop with. Who knows, if this is Max Bedef, I guess could have mattered. But I think for now, I'll just go for the Earth Power. Because if he gives me this Heatran, it's pretty huge. Uh, for my Tornadoes again. 
I'm not sure what his scouting play can be, because the Gala Weezing doesn't want to necessarily come in on this. Basculation doesn't necessarily deal with me. He doesn't have greatest earth power swappings per se on his team, so that's why it can be a very tough position for him to um, think about the fact that maybe I'm not locked into a move. And maybe he has to just find out the worst way possible by letting the Heatran go down and proceed from there. But he does withdraw. Who is this? Uh, who is this scouting play for this then? Hilbert. Which is the okay? It's the Basque Legion. And I go for the Earth Power, which does do a lot to it. It did do a lot to it. Now. It is the female version, so it should be like a special set. The only way he can really hurt me is by Ice Beam here, so part of me wants to say that I could scout for this. Because I don't think he bring this in not having a way to um, have a punishing play afterwards. So part of me wants to say go into my Mulani. That well, it doesn't resist the Ice Beam, but I'll take it well enough. So I think I'll make that play and scout for the Choice Scarf set. Like, I, initially I haven't done the proper scouting place as, as I did before, but now I'll make one. As I make that play and my one of my better Pokemon versus him gets frozen. Is this how I'm not gonna make the playoffs, that when, uh, when the games get very tough and important, these kind of things start to happen to me? Um, like I de technically do have ways to still deal with this, but I don't want to swap into anything. I think I'll go for the fact that I'll hopefully thaw, because it's the same chance of getting frozen. As he just proceeds to go for Ice Beam again. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know how else I'm gonna go about this afterwards, because I guess it would mean that I have to terrorize my Diancy in a case that it's a... in case it's not choiced. But yeah. The Bishop is a lot scarier now, and um, I hope I get to... I know, I know what game I sign up for. I, I sign up to play Pokemon, so like, these things, I know these things can happen, but... Um, this also has been outpacing me, so... I should know it's Scarf, right? That 100% should mean that, right? Yeah, this is Choice Scarf. So my Diancy actually doesn't have to terrorize then. Like, I, I can't believe this, like, I make the proper play for once, do my scouting if it's a choice scout or not, and then I get obliterated from that. Um, do I go into my tone and play around with the hurricane? I don't really feel like I should be. Maybe I have to go into Diancy. I have you to terrorize as well. Does terrorizing you will be... Terrapod and Dark can matter later on. I might have to go into Diancy and just fire off a attack, but I don't like that positioning afterwards. Terrorizing High Trapple can be detrimental in some cases. I think Diancy is the only play, unfortunately. As much as I'm thinking about it being a winning condition, I think in a scenario like this, because I don't want anything else to be Ice Beam on. I want to say this is what I have to do. Um, do I take this turn to Trick Room and start breaking stuff? That might be... I don't know if it's too... It could be a little too early here, though. 
Diancy versus the Basque Legion. The Basque Legion might be preserved here, so in a way I'm also thinking that maybe I should go for the Trick Room and afterwards I can really start putting the pressure on him. I think I'll go for the Trick Room here. Yeah. Because he gives me an opportunity afterwards to go for a big hit. As he goes into the Galar Weezing, which is fair, because... Um, the thing that it was supposed to check, one of them is already uh, dead by being frozen for a while. And uh, for now I want to say I'll just go for Power of Media Beam and start breaking stuff. As uh, the... They should be killing this. I get the special attack race, and the power world will be consumed, and we do fire it off, and we do get to kill the Weezing at least, which is... I guess it's something for me, right? Now, the unfortunate part is that I did plan to use this as a winning condition, so we'll have to see that if I have to commit now because of the setback that I have to start just breaking with this instead. The Choice Scout Basculation is a threat though to me, so in a way I'm kind of thinking that maybe later on I do have to terrorize my High Trapple. But I do have two Endure Cast Up Berries as well to deal with it. That I had earlier with this, but he does go into the Bishop. Now... Does that mean he's gonna be Terra Steel? See, this is where I think I have to Terralize to cover my bases, because if this Terralizes into Steel and I go for Moonblast or Earth Power... Yeah, this is where his Terra Captaincy up should like. If he's Terra Flying and I go for Earth Power and I don't Terralize, I lose everything <laughs> with my DNC. So I think I have to Terralize here. And do I just go for Earth Power in a case that it's not flying? I think so. I'll, I'll do that. I unfortunately will burn my Terralization, so the High Trapple has to rely on Cast Up Endor to deal with that Basculation late game. Or my High Dragon for the same thing, depending on the situation. But for now, I'll go for the Terra Water. It is still a very good defensive typing versus a lot of things. He does. Just stay in with it and it lives as he does go for the Iron Head. So I'm glad that I Terralized there because it did happen to live that hit. And now... He doesn't again have great ways to... Like if he Terralizes into Flying then I don't get anything out of the turn. But I don't think he can swap into plus one Earth Power on anything else. So I think for now Moonblast is a better play. He may just go for Sucker Punch regardless here. But I'm glad that this Bishop is now being dealt with, because that was the one of the bigger things that I needed my Ogre Bond for. He does Terrorize, for the sake of it. And uh, if it's Terra Flying, I'm super glad uh, that I did what I did. Yeah, it is Terra Flying, so I'm glad that I pressed the Moonblast here, because otherwise I would have wasted a turn. So I'm glad in that regard. He does go for the Sucker Punch to get a little bit of chip. And uh, we take out the bishop, which is really nice. Which is really nice. So, we have been able to punch a hole to his team with this Diane C set. And uh, we do still have to worry about a little bit about the Basculation. But if I can preserve this Diane C, it is a ice resist for me, which is nice. I do have a sack in Swampert that I really don't value too much in this game. Uh, Choice, Beck, uh, Choice Beck's Torn can do a lot of damage to either Iron or Enhance with Psychic. It can potentially kill the Godson with Icy Wind. As we see the Iron Hands coming in. Now he does have to take a lot of um, damage coming into here. I think for now, based on the situation, I think I want the damage instead of like preserving here. Because damaging this thing means that it's a way less uh, threatening for my other guys, especially my Torn. 
So I'll go for the Earth Power even if it happens to lift the hit. Why did I click Earth Power? This thing is weak to Fairy. Oh, well maybe I'm covering the Heatran Swap. Let's see if he goes into Heatran here. <laughs> I guess in, in hindsight that if he does make the Heatran play, this is gonna be a genius play. <laughs> He does withdraw. I'm a genius. Please go to Heatran. <laughs> I'm a genius. I am actually a genius. <laughs> I was thinking like, I'll press Earth Power. That's the super effective button. Oh, my stat would have been that too. You know what? I'm fantastic. I am going to be recovering. <laughs> I am going to be making up for the last week when I was so... When I edited it, that video versus Zoe, I'm like, oh my god, I think I made only one good play throughout the entire battle. Regardless of the fact that having Magnet Rise on my Revaro would have made a huge difference. But, uh, yeah. Okay. We dealt with the Heatran. Regardless of all that. Now... In this scenario, I think I'm better off preserving this, because versus Basculation that is locked in, I can still go for... Uh, trick room So I think now I'm better off going to my Swampert and let that thing die instead Or get up a slow uh, flip turn if he is forced to click a electric move here So I'm gonna be doing just that as he does go for the Thunder Punch Now the other option here what I could do is that I'll go for Earthquake But I don't know if that's gonna be a doing a whole lot to this I guess I could check how much my hit from Tornadoes does to this thing uh, this Iron Hands It's a Sword Dance set uh, My Tony Desterian will do 58% to this Unless it's like max HP as well Then I'll do like 50 Which is pretty good So I think for now I'll just go for the Earthquake and just get some damage on this. He does go for the Drain Punch. So I guess I'll navigate a little bit of recovery this way. And keep it in a range of my Torn. Even being burned, yeah. And now this next Drain Punch actually doesn't uh, recover that much. He is weakness policy on it though. He is weakness policy on it. Which makes sense now that why he brought it earlier in. On my Swamp because it would have broken me down. Um, I don't think right now it matters a whole lot what I'll do, but I'll go for the flip turn in a case that, like, I don't know, like, he would have gone for a sword dance and then I could have pivoted in on it. But I want to say from that range, I am pretty set to, um, I could also consider Hydrake on here, actually, let me see. Hydrake on with Draco could kill this. Earth Power would do like 47 to 55, but if that doesn't kill, he gains quite a bit of health. So I think for now... I would go into Torn. I wanna say... Let's go to Torn. Yeah, cause I don't know what kind of spread that thing has, so I want it, don't, don't want it to drain punch a lot of health back. So I'll go for the Psychic here. Choice Specs Psychic surely takes this thing out from here, cause it's not a Salt Vest. Cool. The Iron Hands is dead. So the one thing that I'm spooked of a little bit is Scott Chomp. But I do have two Cast Up Berries to hopefully be enough to deal with it. Now, I might be honestly staying in and just hit it with this. In a case that it's like a reducing berry, like let's say a Hapan berry. He does go into the Rayhan, which is the God Chomp. Which will be taking some chippies from my hazards, thankfully. And I think for now, we will just stay and go for Psychic and get some damage on this thing. Because I have the Ghost of Berries to hopefully bail me out from this Kelsot. Hopefully I don't think about the... Like I should have, I guess, 
try to do some mox versus a in a scenario where i press endor versus a scale sword but i want to say endor does work and i do have two shots at it so i don't have to think about a scenario that he preserves this and goes into basculisa when i reveal it but for now i'll just be hitting what is in front of me and go from there so we go for psychic this will do a decent amount because we are choice specs yeah that does good amount of damage as he goes for the skull shot raw he does get a critical hit there. Does he get 5 hits? He does get 5 hits. Okay. Hmm. Does my Diancy actually live a hit from this thing? On the hell on the amount of health that I'm at. Let me see. Got jump. I am a water type right now. I am at 152. I wanna say I live that hit. Yeah, my Diancy should live a hit, which means that I could go for a Trick Room and then I should be fine. And there's no hazards being up, I don't think. No, I don't think he had a chance to press Stealth Rock, so I, should, I think I'll be okay just going for Diancy and press Trick Room. So, we'll press Trick Room, we should live this hit, and then hopefully Diane sees us press Moonblast twice and wins. Like, I'm assuming this is a loaded dice set, and he got the 5 hits with it thanks to that. He does go for the scale shot. Hopefully he doesn't get a critical hit here. He does get the 5 hits, and we do live it. There we go. Oh, he got the 4 hits. Okay. So now we get a Patriot Chrome. And I wanna say from here... Moonblast should clear, clear out. I noticed that um, 5 hits would have killed me there, but I guess it's still better to take this chance here and clear out the game. I did have the two cast up berries to hopefully deal with it afterwards, but this way I can clear with more mons alive. Assuming that this thing didn't get a priority move, but it didn't, so this gives me opportunity to hopefully just clear out with uh, Diancy getting two kills at the end. Which I'm really happy for, cause last week Diancy didn't really have ca I didn't give the Diancy the proper chance to go for a late game trick room like I was planning to do versus Pocky AMD. But this week, unless this has Aqua Jet, this should be a 3-0. If it has Aqua Jet, it's locked into that, and my other two guys resist water. So we just go for Moonblast here, and uh, there we go. We do manage to beat one C Bennett there. Uh, a little bit scuffy, uh, considering the fact that we got frozen there, so the end game got a little bit tedious. Uh, thanks to that, but also for my behalf, I cannot say that I played it completely cleanly yet, but a lot cleaner than last week. There were a couple of mistakes. Risk in the RBC the scale sword maybe was like unnecessary, but in some ways it did gave me the opportunity to go for this win. 3-0 fashion, which uh, otherwise I'm not sure if I would have been able to secure that differential. I think otherwise it would have been like a 2 or 1 or if I had to re uh, resort into my cast steps. But regardless, me when it's the win, we bounce back and now we are 2 and 2 record, which makes me feel a lot easier going ahead. And hopefully I can push for that playoff spot, which is still ultimately the goal. And hopefully by then I'm, you know, able to be perform in a level that I know I can, but I've been not been able to really show it yet fully for you guys, especially for the newer viewers. I know there's more to give from me. And I'm working myself to get there. But, happy about the win. Cannot really be sad about this, RBC. Make sure to check out my opponent, 1C Bennett, and all the other coaches in the league. Because I'm sure there's been a lot of great battles once again in the PBL Season 3 in here in Week 4. Until next week, thank you again for watching, and I'm gonna be seeing you guys later.